Today we'll be talking about how to map results that have been processed in another fMRI analysis package, such as SPM or FSL, and use them to project the results onto a surface using AFNI's SUMA program. Well, technically, SUMA is a standalone program, but they are frequently used together. Anyway, what you first need is a folder called SUMA underscore MNI, and this is available for download from Ziad Saad's website, and a link will be provided in the description box below this video. So within this SUMA underscore MNI folder, we have these different templates for projecting our results onto a surface based map. And you also notice here that I have these SPMT files which have been generated from a contrast. This is from an experiment that I ran about a year ago. And the first thing we need to do is to convert this .header .image format into AFNI format, which is brick head, as you can see up here. So to do that, we type in 3D copy, the name of the SPM file, just use the header, and I'm going to call this AFNI underscore SPMT. All right, so you see that that generated AFNI underscore SPMT, both the brick and head. And in order to project it into this standardized space, we need to type in the command 3D refit, and it is going to be in the view, TORC for Tallyrack, and space, I'm going to put MNI. And then the name of the file itself, which is AFNI underscore SPMT plus TLRC. Okay, so now that that's all been done, we can go ahead, open up AFNI, and use the dash NIML option. This will allow you to listen for neural imaging markup language, which is how AFNI communicates to SUMA, and also an ampersand so I can use this same terminal later. All right, so underlay, I am going to use the MNI template, and I'm going to overlay these converted SPM results. All right. So with SUMA, I need both a spec file and I need a surface volume. So the spec file contains information about the nodes and the edges and how they're going to map onto the mesh, which we're going to project onto. So SUMA, spec, and we're going to use the N27, let's say left hemisphere dot spec. You can use more than one if you wish. And the surface volume is also going to be the MNI underscore N27 plus TLRC volume. And yeah, that should all be good. So now SUMA loads. I'm going to expand this here a little bit. Make it more manageable. So this is our actually 2D surface area. This is 3D, this is volumetric, this is 2D, this is surface. And click in this window and then hit T for talk, which will allow these two to communicate to each other. So now we have the results mapped onto a surface. So I move the cursor around here, and correspondingly this crosshair will also move around on the surface. Now, I didn't output a cluster corrected image through SPM. I could have, that would have been a little bit easier, but for now, let's just set this threshold, this p-value threshold, or I guess t-value, it's somewhat arbitrary right now. Let's set it to one, only look at positives, and let's set the range to 4.5, representing the max intensity of the heat map. So, remember this is a t-map, so, any values which are about 4.5 or higher will be coded with the maximum intensity, which is red. All right. So also through SUMA, and this is what makes it such a, an important tool. For example, in this experiment, we said that one of our results was in the superior temporal sulcus. Now, we weren't using AFNI. We're using these volumetric-based maps in SPM. So it's very hard to determine what is inside a gyrus or what's inside a sulcus and what is on the gyrus itself. But when you map it onto SUMA, you can see that this gray right here, this is the sulcus, the lighter is the gyrus. And you do see that this activation on the dorsal side is in fact within the sulcus. 
And these images are pretty to look at and they can be used to make really good figures even though you may have processed all your results in another package such as SPM. More detailed instructions for how to do this can be found on the blog and also in a Word document from my website.